My dear? Oh, not nervous, darling, but just a little self-conscious. You know. Well, Mr. Stewart, what is this big surprise you have for me? Uh, you'll hear all about it very shortly, my dear. Why, Rona, you haven't eaten a thing. Don't be silly. This is the best dinner I ever drunk. You know, I'm, I'm dying to know what they're almost going to give Mona this time. Perhaps she's going to give her another yacht in case the one she has breaks down. <laughs> if I had a daughter as slow as an unappreciative as Mona, I'd turn her over my knee. I wouldn't speak too rashly, my dear. Remember, it's been years since you've seen your knee. <laughs> my friend. It's been many years since this old home has been honored by the presence of so many of my friends and my daughter Mona's. But after the culmination of the event I am about to announce, I hope that many such festive little gatherings will take place here. It gives me indescribable pleasure to announce that Miss Ursula Chesborough has honored me by consenting to become my wife. I would like to propose a toast to the prospective bride and groom. Uh, here's a, a... Aren't you drinking? No, I'm not. out of your system. Then perhaps we can sit down and talk this over like two adults. The whole thing is ridiculous. I wish Mona liked me, Ronnie. She's probably very sorry. I'd forget it. Ursula. I've seen her every day and she never mentioned a word about this. You didn't either. Why did I have to learn it with the others as though I were a guest in your house? Because, my dear, I wish to avoid just such a scene as this. She's already telling me what I should and shouldn't do, and I don't propose to take orders from her. Ursula is very sensible and understanding, Mona, and thinks a great deal of you. I'm sure if you try to understand her, you will love her too. Never. Will you join me for coffee in the drawing room? Dad, please don't do this thing. My dear child, all your life I have catered to your slightest whim, but this is one time I can't. 
and won't. The day you marry Ursula, I'll leave this house. That's your privilege, my dear. Then you won't change your mind? No, Mona. I won't. Very well, then. Please excuse me to your guest. Have it your own way, my dear. Oh, dear old man, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, now, don't worry, dear. I know, but if I could only talk with Mona. Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. In her present mood, <laughs> Mona is better left alone. Oh, all right, dear. Drink, Mr. Van Sant. Uh, I tell you, Gavin, it's a shame. Goldfish always do their part. Yet everybody gets a new deal but the goldfish. That's quite true, sir. They can't even organize. They still have to swim around 24 hours a day, Gavin. Look at little Charlie here. Just dying to take little Minnie over here out for a stroll in the woods and sit down and hold her fin or maybe play love and bloom on her scales. But he can't do it. They have no home life. Poor little fishy. Ronnie, what on earth are you doing? Well, I was just seeing how a goldfish would act with the jitters. I wasn't... But you kill them. Well, there's never been a case known on record of a goldfish dying from drink. Did uh, you put Papa Stewart in his place? I told him what a fool he was making of himself. I don't know what the older generation is coming to, Mona. We have apparently failed in raising our parents successfully. Oh, Ronnie, don't you realize what this means to me? Sure I do. If your father wants to throw his life away by getting married, there's only one thing for you to do. And that is? Get married for spite. Throw your life away on some good-for-nothing, worthless scamp like me. And I won't let you down either, Mona. I promise you I'll devote my whole life to amounting to nothing just for your sake. When can we get married? What? I told him I'd do it, and I will. We'll just have a cheap runaway elopement to Niagara Falls and see what Mr. Jerome Stewart and his fiance think of that. Are you game, Ronnie? What do you think I've been hanging around here two years for? Ronnie, I've got a pack. I'll be ready in ten minutes. We'll take the first train to Buffalo and be married there. <laughs> You think we were married already? We're not going to be married, darling. I can't go through with it. Why not? Because it wouldn't be fair to you. I don't love you. You know that. Oh, now listen, Mona. No, Ronnie. Now, just please. a minute. Now let's talk this thing over. Please. Honey, I don't think you could love anyone in the usual sense. But you've got to settle down with someone substantial pretty soon, or you're going to drift on the rocks, Mona. I've played around plenty and all that, but I love you. And who knows, maybe our marriage will mean the salvation of us both. Now, don't stop me. Let me finish. You've uh, been very impulsive in your time. Of course, we all know that. I've worried a lot of times about you running off and rushing into a hasty marriage and making a mess out of your life. Isn't that what I might be doing now? No, it isn't, Mona. You know, I could never do anything to hurt you. You're a dear, Ronnie. 
And I wish I could feel differently toward you, but I can't. If we go through with this, you're the one who'll be hurt. Well, let me worry about that. I... Your room's all made up, sir. Would the lady like to have our room made up now? Yeah, in just a moment. Honey, you're tired and nervous. Get a good night's rest and you'll think differently in the morning. And then we'll hash the whole thing over. Good night. Good night, Ronnie. I'll get this awful stuff out of your way. <laughs> good night. Good night. Shall I remove this, ma'am? Yes, please. Ma'am, we just pulled into Tufton. This is only a whistle stop. How far is it to Albany? Mm, about 28 miles. All right. I'll take my bags out to the platform. I'm getting off. But, uh, but, uh, madam, this Tufton's only a water hole. Please do as I ask. Oh, Porter. Yes, ma'am. In the morning. Tell the gentleman in drawing room B that I'll communicate with him later. Tell me what time the next train leaves to New York. I could, but I ain't no porter. I'm the station master here. All right. <laughs> well, uh, station master, what time does it leave? The next train for New York goes through here in half an hour. Oh, splendid. Could you tell me a ticket, station master? Yeah, sure. Won't do no good. Train don't stop here. Well, then, what time does the next train for New York stop here? The milk train stops here at 5.13 in the morning. In the morning? Oh. I can't wait here all night alone. Well, there's a train out of Albany at 1.40. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's all right, man. <laughs> Maybe if I drove over, I could catch... Is it possible to hire a car at this time of night? Well, yeah, sure. I'll show you, eh? Right down there where you see that light, that's the Night Owl Cafe. You got a couple of cars you can hire there, but you ask for Johnny O'Rourke. He's very reliable. Thank you. That's all right. Oh, will my bag be all right here till I get back? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd carry them for you, only somebody might see me and tell my wife that I've been Lally gagging around with a pretty gal, and <laughs> I'm catching.
Are you Johnny O'Rourke? No. Well... Never mind. Will you charge to drive me to Albany? Well, I'm... I'll pay you well if that's what's bothering you. I've got to catch that 140 train. Okay. And... Um, stop at the station first, driver. I left my bags there. All right. Get out. What? You heard me. Get out. Give me that purse, your watch and ring. I'll do nothing of the kind. Do I have to take them from you? supposed to do? Wait here for a streetcar? Here. There's a car line to Albany a few miles down the road. Do you think you can actually get away with this? Looks like it, doesn't it? What's the matter? Afraid you overlooked something? No. Decided I couldn't rob a woman. Come on, get in. I'll drive you to Albany. Oh, I think I sprained my ankle. Well, how did you do that? Running from a wild animal. Where are you going? To get your bag. How sweet of you. What are you doing, running around the country alone in the middle of the night? I was eloping, despite my father, but I changed my mind. You're just the type. Just like all the rest of these rich dames, spoiled and stubborn. Who's stubborn? going to do now? Well, it looks like we're going to spend the night here. Oh, I can't do that. 
There's the road. Who said the age of chivalry was dead? You might offer a lady a cigarette. Would you mind rolling one of these for me? You're not only spoiled and stubborn, you're a helpless scatterbrain. You can't talk like that to me. Keep your old cigarette. Very well. Good night, scatterbrain. Good night, Jesse James. Good morning, Jesse James. Morning, Scatterbrain. Did you find someone to pull us out? Yeah, a farmer down the road. He'll be along in a little while. Give me that ankle. Yes, Doctor. Horse liniment. Well, it's all the farmer had. We'll take some of the soreness out anyway. I suppose if I were hungry, you'd bring me some oats. How long have you been a bear? It was my first job. What did you do before then? A year in Sing Sing prison. For oh, what? Something I didn't do. Something you didn't do? Yeah. A friend and I were working in a bank in Rochester. A shortage was discovered and pinned on me and I was set up. He was the one who did it, though. I found that out later. Hey, uh, young fella! That's the farmer. I'll be back in a minute. Say, young fella, looks to me like you're in deeper than I thought. Yeah. Much deeper. Well, uh, I usually charge five dollars to get them out of this hole, but I'll do it for you for two. Okay.
When you found that out, did you report him to the police? No. He has a wife and two kids. I'd already taken the rap, so what was the use? I'm so sorry. Come on, get your shoe on. Let's get started. How long have you been out of prison? A month. Have you tried to find another job? Have I? It's all I've been doing. Who'd give an ex-convict a job? I would. I'm going to give you an opportunity to earn an honest living. How? Oh. I don't want to give my dad the satisfaction of welcoming the prodigal daughter back home yet. There's plenty of attractive country around here. We could have a lot of fun seeing it. We? Yes, we. I'll pay you $25 a day to drive me around in your car. No, the car's not for hire. I thought you wanted a job. I'm offering you one and you're turning it down. You don't deserve help. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. But you did say you wanted a job. Well, you can get lots of guys to drive you around for half that much money. Yes, but not lots of guys that will take care of me the way you do and doctor my sprained ankle. All right, I'll drive you around as your ankle gets better. morning. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, where is she? Who? Mona, of course. Mona? Isn't she here? If she were here, would I be asking you? What happened? Well, no, nothing happened. I was awakened on my wedding morn and politely informed that I had lost my beloved during the night. So I just shuffled off to Buffalo and spent a couple of days at the falls, and here I am. You idiot! You sit there making a lot of fool remarks and something serious may have happened to her. Where'd she get off the train? I had a little jerk town called Tuxton. I thought she came back you home. You thought? Yes, I thought. I yes, was... and while you stood there thinking she may have been kidnapped or murdered. Or worse. Worse? Oh, don't stand there like a dumbbell. Say something. Well, I've been trying Shut to... Shut up. Come on. We're going out and find her. You know. Now, don't get yourself all worked up, dear. This may be just one of Mona's pranks. I'm sorry, Ursula. But three days have passed since this young nitwit ran away with Mona. And something serious may have happened. I've got to find out. Of course, dear. But keep me informed. Yes, I will. Uh, have Germans pack my grip for me, will you? Yes. Say, where is this town? Tuxton. Tuxton? Well, it's a town outside of Albury, a little place I... Uh, in a small oh, town. Come on. What's that? That is a crutch. For me? How thoughtful of you. <laughs> thoughtful nothing. I'm tired of carrying you around everywhere. If that was such a bother, we could have bought one. Oh, there you go again. Money, money, money. Go on, try walking on it. Oh, no, no, no. Look, stupid. <laughs> This is the way of you. See? <laughs> 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 You've been holding out on me. Do you know any more tricks? <laughs> oh. Come on. Let's see. <laughs> you know, you ought to do that more often. You have a marvelous laugh. Yeah, sure. I remember her. She was a mighty pretty young woman. All I... right, all right. 
You know where she went? Sure I know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. She hired a car from Johnny O'Rourke to drive her to Albany. Where is this O'Rourke now? Here, yeah, I'll show you. There's Johnny's car standing right in front of that lunchroom. Thank you very much. Quite Come welcome. Come on, Romeo. What are you going to do when my ankle gets better? Do I have to go over all that again? I'm dropping you off at Albany at the first corner. It's got to be soon, too. I got to see a Mr. Delaney. He's due back in town about now. What are you going to see him about? Business. What kind of business? What is this, a third degree? I hope it's not some kind of crooked business. Well, what if it is? You certainly can't spoil a swell day. She may have gotten a lift to Albany, but she certainly didn't hire me to drive her. This is very strange, Romy. I wish you wouldn't get yourself so upset. Mona's all right. All right, nothing. I tell you there's something wrong. Can you drive us to Albany in a hurry? Sure, get in. Oh, I forgot my hat and coat. Okay, scatterbrain. Never mind, I'll get it. Not a bad sprint for a cripple. Well, I... Why did you have to lie about your ankle? I... I didn't want you to leave me. Well, I hate a faker. And you don't care what happens to me. These last few days have just been a new thrill for you. Something you haven't tried before. Well, it's over. I only tried to get that crazy idea of retaliation out of your head. Oh, yes? Well, you lay off me. Your ankle's okay now. We'll go on to Albany and our agreement ends there. Does it? What do you mean, does it? If there are any new thrills being passed around, I'm not going to be left out. Hello. Hello, I want to speak to Mr. Delaney. He just got back in town this morning. I'll see if he's in his office. Who is this? Just a minute. Yeah? There's a guy I want you on the phone, boss. He says his name is Mannering. All right, put him on. Hello? Hello, Mr. Delaney? Oh, my name's Mannering. Hanlon told me to call you up. Oh, Spike Hanlon said look me up, huh? Yeah. Said you had a lot of pull, could get me a job. All right, come over and I'll see you right away. Here's where you get out. I'm not getting out. You're getting out if I have to throw you out. Listen, let's at least part friends. Come on, get out. I've got to see Delaney. I thought you were going to throw me out. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Remember, you asked for it. Woo! You're attracting an audience. Hey, listen, this is a private argument. Beat it, will you? Come on, Come on, get out. Come on. Get out. Me? Keep going along. Hello, officer. What seems to be the trouble here? Oh, no trouble, officer. Only my husband wants to end our honeymoon here, and I want to spend it in Niagara Falls. Now, what would you suggest? Well, I'd suggest that you keep right on driving until you get to Niagara Falls. Now, oh, come on, what did I say? Keep on. Police Department. We're doing everything we can, Mr. Stewart. They're not finding my daughter. 
Well, after all, they haven't much to work on. We're not even sure she Albany. Certainly she came to Albany. You should know by this time when Mona says she's going to do something, she does it. And you're trying to convince me that she's disappeared into thin air. Well, if anyone can find her, the police can. Didn't they promise to phone you the minute they hear anything? Why don't you take it easy and give them a chance? We'll use the back stairs. Hi, Hello, Sid. Glad to see you. Sit down. Have a cigar? Never mind the flowers, Delaney. You know what we're here for. Yeah. I got your letter. Okay. What's holding you up, then? Now, wait a minute, Barkley. Wait a minute, nothing. We've waited four years. We're here for the payoff. Come on, now, you're getting off easy. Now, you listen to me. I spent five grand on a mouthpiece to handle your case. If I hadn't, you might have put in 20 years instead of four. I'll give you a thousand bucks a piece, cash, and call it square. <laughs> The mouthpiece was your idea. He saved your neck, too. We're blowing out of here with ten grand, Delaney, and we're leaving right now. Yeah. We'll get it one way or another. You can't blackmail me. Get out of here, both of you. Ten grand, Delaney. Come on. Kick through. All right, Sid, get out. Listen, you are... Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. This guy's got a lot of dough hidden around his office someplace. He's afraid of bankers. We're gonna find him. We gotta rip his joint to pieces. Now I'll be right out. You stay here like a good kid and give me a break, will you? I will. You promise to turn down any crooked offers. Okay, I promise. I... I'm sorry. Well, I'm not. My name's Mannering. I want to see Mr. Delaney. He's expecting me. Oh, yeah, you're the guy that phoned. Right upstairs. Thanks.
matter? What happened? Delaney's dead. Stabbed. Who did it? How should I know? headquarters. Quick. You gotta get out before something happens. If you're innocent, why are you trying to get away? Well, there's no time for explanations. I don't want you get mixed up in this mess. You didn't. I didn't. He died in my arms. He was gasping. All he could say was thin. I didn't do it, I tell you. Then why are you running away? What do you think I'm a sap? I'm an ex-convict, and then they pin it on me whether I did it or not. I drive to the station, you can take the first train home. I'll do nothing of the kind. If you're innocent, I'm sticking by you. They're not going to railroad you again if I can help it. Now go on, hurry. What did you say his name was? Mannering. I sent him right up. The boss was expecting him. He had a dame waiting outside for him in his car. What did he look like? Tall, good looking, wore a blue suit and a. Uh, never mind, what is that uh, license number again? New York R77437. New York R77437. Uh, Casey, have that nice check to print. Thanks. Jim, get the radio department on the phone. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Pick up ex-convict David Mannering and girl companion. Wanted for murder. Driving seven passenger touring car. New York license. R77-437. Go get them, boys. He is six feet tall, wearing dark blue suit, gray felt hat. Girl has on white coat, black hat. I missed him. Go on headquarters. Right. Mannering, get out. Are you supposed to take your hat off in jail? I've forgotten. It's been so long. Oh, Dad. And Ronnie, too. I'm so glad you're here. For the love of heaven, Mona. 
What is this all about? They tell me that you're in here as an accomplice to a murderer. He's not a murderer. I'm not concerned about him, Laura. But I am concerned about you. I'm doing everything I can to get you out of here. But this is one time my influence isn't doing much good. But the whole thing's a mistake. They didn't do anything. They can't keep us in here. That's just what they're going to do. You're in this as deep as he is. But we're innocent. You've got to get us out. Get us out? Why, I can't even get you out. What do you mean, us? The murderer that got you into this trouble? He didn't get me into any trouble. And he's not a murderer. He's a victim of circumstances and... I love him. Yes, love him. And I'd marry him if he'd have me. You marry a criminal if he'd have you? Yes. He was railroaded into his prison record. Before that, he worked in a bank in Rochester. You seem to know a great deal about him. Where did you meet this man? I employed him to drive me to Albany. I'm going to see this crook. Is there anything at all I can do? Oh, Ronnie. That was a terribly shabby trip for me to run out on you as I did, Ron. Oh, that's all over with and forgotten now, Mona. What's worrying me is that uh, your infatuation for this man may be another mistake. It isn't an infatuation, Ronnie. It's the first real thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm going to stand by him. I know, but suppose he's convicted. He won't be. He can't be. He didn't do this thing, Ronnie. And you've got to help me prove it. Well, I'll try, but I'm not very good at miracles. You know, Mona? What? This place would be all right if it had a little wooden bar, you know, where you could keep glasses and <laughs> things. Uh-oh. Here comes laughing water. Time's up. Goodbye, Ronnie. I'll see you soon. Here comes this girl. Here comes this Someone to see you, Mannering. There he is. I'm Jerome Stewart, Mona's father. So what? So what? What do you mean by getting my daughter mixed up in this mess? Oh, I didn't get your daughter mixed up in anything. I tried to get rid of her the first time I met her. <laughs> Only you brought her up to be such a scatterbrain. She's impossible. You leave my daughter's bringing up out of this. It's none of your business whatsoever. My business when she butts into my affairs, tries to run them. If these bars are going to keep her away from me, it's just fine with me. Well, then, since you don't seem inclined to take advantage of my daughter's friendship, possibly I can help you, employ an attorney to defend you. Now I know where your daughter gets that habit of butting into other people's business. What's that? Say, listen, can I make you understand that I don't want anything from you, or your daughter, or your money, or your attorneys? Instead of standing here wasting time for me, why don't you use some of that influence of yours to get your daughter out? She doesn't belong in here anyway. Thank you, you realize, of course, Mr. Stewart, that your daughter is in a very bad situation. Despite the fact that she was outside at the time the crime was committed, she is still an accomplice. Naturally, I can only release her under a very heavy bond. And I must restrict her to the confines of this city. I understand. Thank you for your consideration, Mr. Craig. Not at all. Oh, uh, regarding this uh, Mannering fellow, we've gone into the case pretty thoroughly. And I strongly advise you to assume no responsibility in his behalf. Thank you. Good day. Good day. I want you to forget this, Mannering. The evidence is dead against him. His fingerprints, the perfect clue, were found on the knife that killed Delaney, and he was trying to make his getaway. That's absolute proof of his guilt. Dad, I know I'm right. I told them I saw two suspicious-looking men running away from the bowling alley. They only laughed at me. 
They wouldn't even listen. Yes, but Mona, dear. Dad, please, let's not discuss it any further tonight. Now, don't worry. You want to crawl into bed and have a good night's rest. Good night, dear. What did you find out? Everything he told you was true. Up at the time of the bank investigation, he was sitting aces high in Rochester. And after that, well, ah, uh, they gave him a rotten deal. No wonder he was so bitter. Come over here and tell me the rest. <laughs> You're grand, Ronnie. You know much, how much I appreciate what you did for me, don't you? Someday I'll do something for you. And get me a drink. <laughs> Ronnie, just before Delaney died, I tried to tell David something about a pin. I wish I knew what he meant. Well, there's all sorts of pins. Big pins, little pins, safety pins. Hair pins, clothes pins, pins, pins. Sticks me. <laughs> oh, Ronnie, please be serious. I am. I'm going down to that bowling alley, and you're going with me. But, Mona, I don't see what good we can do. Well, maybe not. But I'm sure I'm right, and you can help me prove it. I'll be dressed in a jiffy. Oh. If I had my way, I'd be miles away from here. Mm. The cops are a cinch to be watching this joint. What for? Don't pick up the guy in jail to bump Delaney off? <laughs> Listen, you sap. We gotta get the litter back we sent Delaney. You know what it means if the cops ever find it. Cross the street, come on. Oh, I get it. Come on. Can you open it? It's a Yale lock. I'm a Harvard man. Me a drink. Oh, Ronnie. Did you hear that? What's the matter? There's somebody downstairs. Ah, you've got the jitters. Go on, get through that bed. David said the office was upstairs. Well, let's go up. You're right. There is someone down there. Come on, let's get out of here.
Come on. We're going upstairs. Said those are the same two men I saw running away the day of the murder. You sure? Sure. Call, call the police. What do I call? Dial operator. Operator. Operator, get me the police, quickly. This is Mona Stewart. Get me Detective Sims. Now listen, Sims. Ah, shut up. I gotta get that letter before we get out of here. Yes. Delaney's bowling alley. Hurry. Behind the deck. Hey, I thought I left this door open. I have got the jitters. Give me a drink. Okay. Butch, lock that door. Come on, get up out of there. What are you doing in here? Looking for a way out? Stick up your hands, both of you. All right. Get around here. What are we going to do with them? Find something to tie them up with. You two fellas cover the alley. Okay. We're going to get in here. It's the cops! Beat it, quick. Take a look around there, Ed. Wait a minute. Drop back. Brilliant. Cover that door. We'll go upstairs. Open this door. See what I told you? Ah, oh, shut up. Go ahead, take him out. Come on, get out of here. Well, well don't come on. Take him out. Come on, get him out. 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 What are you two doing here? Who do you suppose phoned for the police? Shouting, Chief. Yeah. The letter did it. Did Barkley admit writing the letter? Oh, yes. He admitted it all right. You see, he dodged the killing and blamed it on to Carter. Carter started to stall and finally cracked and spilled the work. <laughs> We've got signed confessions out of both of them. That's nice work, Sims. Is Mannering outside? Yeah. Oh, ask Stuart and his daughter to come in here, please. All right. Will you folks come in, please? Well, Mr. Craig. Well, Miss Stewart, it looks as though you had won your case. Congratulations. Then that means that they, uh, Mr. Mannering is free. Where is he? Can I see him? Why, of course. Bring Mannering in here, Sim. All right. Well, you old pessimist, what do you think of my character judgment now? Oh, David. Well, Mannering, you're free. You've been entirely clear. You know, even the law sometimes makes mistakes. 
And this time, we nearly made a very serious one. Fortunately, Miss Stewart prevented our doing so. Well, I don't know how to thank you for all you've done, Mona. You're the sweetest, most lovable girl I've ever met. I didn't know they came as fine as you. I'm glad you finally found that out. Well, uh, there's a lot I ought to say, I know, but... Well... Thanks. There goes something your money won't buy for, Mona. Just went out the door. Mm -hmm. You're getting warmer. Mona! Are you gonna let him get away with that? You know, she was going to marry me once. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Well, don't you think you ought to crack out with a drink? Good luck, Leah. Hello? Might as well give up, David. You can't get rid of me. Mona, I've given you your last chance to get away. Now oh, I'll never let you go. Come on, get away from there! Right here and now, I want you to know you're a spoiled, headstrong, catabrained. Get out of the way! What's the trouble here? Well, there's no trouble, officer. Only, uh, my wife wants to spend our honeymoon here, and I want to spend it in Niagara Falls. Now, which do you suggest? Now, you're asking for us, of course. Come on, baby. Now, get from there. Get in there where you belong. Can you see it hanging up on my trap here? Now, go straight ahead and keep to the right. <laughs> 